I'm excited about this message. Yes. Fathers are indeed unique. Hallelujah. Amen. And we need them. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. You can, um, we're going to just, you can just stay right there. We're going to pray. And we're going to get into the word. Amen. Children, uh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Father, right now, Father, for this day, Lord. Father, we thank you for these, your sheeps, Father. We thank you, Father, for the fathers today, Lord. We thank you, Father, that your anointing shall flow freely, uninterrupted, or, hin or, or, or hindered by any satanic or demonic force. I pray less of me and all of you. I think, ask that you think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords, that which you have me to say to these, your sheep. I thank you that they have ears to hear. A heart to receive and a spirit to contain your word. This is in the all-knowing, all-powerful name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 You can take your seats. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers in the house. <laughs> Hallelujah. Give them a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody know raising children is not the easiest task. But when you <laughs> and you really need the Holy Spirit to pull it off. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, we're going to start in Proverbs. Today I'm going to talk to all the men in the house. Hallelujah. The, the sons. I'm going to talk to those that are going to be fathers. I'm going to talk to those that are fathers. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's start with Proverbs. Proverbs is a book of wisdom. I love Proverbs. It's a book of wisdom. And wisdom is far better worth, far more worth, better than gold and silver. Amen. So turn with me to Proverbs 8 through 16 in the Amplified. Proverbs 1, 8 through 16. If you're there, say amen. amen. I'm speaking to the sons now. These are to all my young men in the house. All my young men in the house. My son, hear the instruction of your father and do not re reject the teaching of your mother. For they are garland of grace on your head and chains and ornaments of gold around your neck. So you don't need to go buy a big old chain with gold. Listening to the instructions of your father and your mother would be far better than that in your life. Amen? Amen. Um, a lot of people say, well, I don't have a father. You do have a father. Everybody have a father, you wouldn't be here. And like Pastor was saying, we all should honor our fathers, regardless of whatever happened, didn't happen, because we're Christians. And you know what? You can always establish a relationship. It's never too late. And you being the Christian, you should be the first to go to your father. Your father's abandoned. You go find him. Let him know it's okay. What God love is, that's what God love is, right? We let him know it's okay. I love you. I understand life. We all didn't get the training we need. We all didn't have good parenting and good skills. It doesn't come with a manual. But you're a Christian now. You're grown up now. And you know how God works. And you know how God loves you when you've missed it. Go find him. And tell him you love him and all is well. And I want to start a relationship with you just as you are. Because that's true love. Not asking somebody to be what you need them or want them to be. That's how God loves us, right? So a 10 says, my son. If sinners entice you, do not consent. That's why it's so important to my young men, my teens. It's very important who you're hanging out with. I know you heard it a hundred times from your mother. We're at now Pastor Franny saying it. Okay? It's very important who you're hanging out with. I know a lot of times we just, oh, it's fun. We're just having fun. Being ugly to old ladies, that ain't fun. That ain't cute. Like I said, a lot of us didn't have training, but we have to be careful because a lot of these things can get you in trouble. A lot of times, you know, they say, hey, let's go rob this store. Man, we'll be out of there in a minute, in a flash. Get the money and we'll be gone. You don't know what's going to happen. A lot of 
lot of men are in prison today and shouldn't be, but they was with the wrong people right. at the wrong time. Right. And it all just started out as, we, we did, man, we get us a little money, man. We'll be out. Ain't nothing going to happen. We ain't going to hurt nobody. Just get some money. What if they pull a gun on you? The whole situation just changed. And this is what we're supposed to be doing as fathers, teaching our sons and our daughters today these things. Because, honey, these women just as big a renegades as the boys are. <laughs> it's a different day. Amen. In 11 it says, if they say, come with us, let us lie and wait to shed blood. Let us ambush the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them alive like Shaloa, the place of the dead. Even whole as they go down to the pit of death. We will find and take all kinds of precious possessions. Money, mammon. That's why it's so important that we're providing for our children. Our children shouldn't feel like they don't have anything. To the point where they got to go out and sell drugs and rob and steal. Amen? Amen. Um, we, will fill, we will fill our houses with spoils. Throw you, throw in your lot with us, they insist. We will have all one money bag in common. My son, do not walk on the road with them. Keep your foot far away from their path, for their feet run to evil. And they hurry to shed blood. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 There's such thing as clean fun. You don't have to be hurting people to have fun. Most of the time they're doing it because they're already angry. Have clean fun. Get friends, go swimming, play some ball somewhere. Go have a house party at home. There's many ways to have fun. Tell some jokes, play some games. It really shows the spirit of a person because you should be able to have clean fun if your spirit is with the Lord and is well and intact for your age. Amen. Amen. Turn with me to Proverbs. Nineteen. Go to verse 19 through um, 26. 18 through 26. If you're there, say amen. amen. Discipline and teach your son while there is hope. Teach. Dis discipline and teach your son while there is hope. You know what that means? We need to be teaching our children here amen. when they're little. You can go out and bend a tree when it's little. You can bend the sap. But boy, let me tell you. Wait a little while and go out there trying to bend that oak tree now that's got a trunk like this and see what you get. That branch, I reach back and slap you. And so with a child. You have to teach them from here how to obey. From here about discipline. From here about love. From here about sharing. Being kind. Uh, anger. You got children screaming at the top of their lungs. What do you think they're going to do when they get old? Throw dishes, your good dishes you paid money for. I just don't understand that. Don't throw my dishes. We would get mad and tear up the whole house. Really? You got to rebuy those things. But you know what? It starts here. You start teaching young as early as six months. A lot of them think, oh, they just babies. They so cute. They playing you. No, I'm serious. Why did I act different with you and then act different with somebody else? Daddy said, hey, straighten up. <laughs> you say, boy, stop. <laughs> they know you tolerate it. Mean what you say. say. I ain't say beat nobody up. Just mean what you say when you say it. And you're fine. You enjoy your children. So a lot of people don't enjoy their children. And they want to stay away from their children because they didn't teach them. And now, oh my goodness. So it says, discipline to teach your son while there is hope. And do not indulge your anger or resentment by imposing inappropriate punishment, nor desire his destruction. And sometimes they can take you there, but you desire his destruction. <laughs> but we can't, you should never spank a child or, or discipline a child when you are angry. Because let me tell you, you're going to go too far. 
But you know what? Go to your room. We'll talk about this later. Then go in your room and pray. Amen. Amen. They wonder, what are you going to your room for? You, you want me to go in this room. Amen. You want me to go in this room. We don't need to talk about this right now. Amen. Amen. A man of great anger will bear the penalty for his quick temper and lack of self-control. For if you rescue him and do not let him learn from the consequences of his actions, you will only have to rescue him over and over again. And this is why Pastor always says it takes a man to raise a man. Because we're nurturers. Women are nurturers. We are. We'll fuss and turn right around and give them something. They learned nothing. <coughs> nothing. We going to make it easy. We're nurturers. We need that man to say, okay, you did that. You know what? Now I'm going to let you get your consequences. But if we don't, it says here in the Bible, we'll have to rescue them over and over and over again. Listen to counsel, receive instruction, accept correction, that you may be wise in time to come. You hear my, I'm a teens listening? Listen to counsel, receive instruction, accept correction. It's going to cause you to have a great life. Amen. You know, it's easy to get in things, but sometimes it's really hard to get out. Amen. Easy to get in, but it can cost you almost half of your life sometimes trying to get out. Listen to your parents. Let me tell you something. Your parents have your best interests at heart. And you should know that. They work. They pay for you everything you need. They take care of you. I don't understand how you can listen to a friend over your parent or a coach. Or a, I don't understand that. I've been here the whole time. Daddy, mama been there the whole time. What's up? But we, I mean, you got kids. My friend, your friend. I tell you what, go stay with your friend. Let them take care of you. But these are the things we need to be bringing to their forefront. And even bring up a friend. Excuse me. But we sit right there and let them talk. My friend. <laughs> we do. And let them, let them run on. No, 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 buddy. I'm the straw. They stir your drink. You have to truly let them know. And when we don't, we do them a disservice. Because they think what they're saying is true. We have to correct them. We have to, and you know what? It's a lot of work. And they don't you say, oh, I, I, I'm doing it too much. Let the Holy Spirit lead and guide you. Because I was, I was the warden. Every little thing, I was on it. You did this, 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 and this. Let the Holy Spirit lead and guide. He'll tell you when to do it. He'll tell you, you know what? Let it go this time. He'll tell you to warn him. He'll tell you to rebuke him. He'll tell you when they need a spanking. Did Pastor Franny say a spanking? Yes. I don't believe in spankings. Really? You believe in the book? The rod say, the Bible say the rod will drive. The, 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 what was it? Dry the, 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 the shenanigans out of them. <laughs> the rod. Not a talking to. Not a time out. Sometimes the rod has to be given. He said, if you don't spank them, oh yeah, he said, they'll bring you, they'll bring you to shame. They will bring you to shame. Hallelujah. So let's keep on reading. That you may be wise in time to come. Many plans are in the man's mind, but it's the Lord's purpose for him that will stand and be carried out. Fathers, we got to be telling them about God's plan for them, not just this worldly career. What about God's purpose? What about God's plan? That's the one they said going to be carried out. God going to uphold that one. But he ain't holding no plans that come before him. He a jealous God. You're ripping, you're running, you're tired, you're broke. Trying to make your kids some live, live in your kids' eyes. Things you didn't get to do. 
Places you thought you wanted to go. Your fame. What about God's purpose? That's what's going to sustain them when the trouble come. Not the career. It'll probably be gone. Because you know the world, as soon as somebody come along better, you out. But not with God. He'll always make a way for you. And that's what we need to be teaching them. But they ain't going to learn that if you don't bring them. Get them involved in the church. Get them involved with everything. Get I mean, it's amazing what the people are paying today for some of these activities. It's a car payment. And say it just as big. Oh, that'll be $700 a month. I mean, a luxury car payment. They have them at their dance. That football, and I don't want to get on football. It's so sad what we're doing to some of our kids. The pressure we put on them. Because you want to make them a meal ticket. It's so sad. I've seen it. I mean, these children are just, it's sad. You can see the struggle, the challenge, the pressure they put on. You hear them out there yelling and screaming at them. And they ain't, they ain't played one down. But yet, you think he's going to the NFL. <laughs> what happened to DNA and genes? Y'all just left that out the equation. I'm going to go on from there. I, I want to encourage you, fathers, not make y'all mad at me. <laughs> mm. But it's the Lord's purpose for him that will stand and be carried out. That which is desirable in a man is loyalty and unfailing love. I want to go back there. It's okay to have the activities, but they shouldn't be before God. Amen. I think every child should be an activity. Because everybody, everybody wants to be good at something. Everybody wants to be good at something. But it shouldn't come before God. He's first. Shouldn't come before the tithe. Amen. The home. The husband. I look like I'm talking to the whole family today, huh? <laughs> <laughs> 22, that which is desi desirable in a man is his loyalty and unfailing love. Guys, you want to be desired? Be loyal. Ooh, women love that. And kind? None this, I'm the man. <laughs> but you're kind and loyal? That is what makes you desirable. Not going out beating your chest, pumping your weights, walking around like this. That don't make you desirable. Being loyal, man. Women love it. Because that's a real man. That's a real man. They don't quit. They don't stop when it get hard. They're there. Amen? Amen. Um, it's better to be poor, man, than a wealthy liar. <laughs> Y'all laugh, but it's true. It's better to be a poor man than a wealthy liar. A lot of y'all will choose to be the liar. I mean, choose to be wealthy. The fear of the Lord leads to life so that one may sleep satisfied, untouched by evil. Look at the peace you have. The lazy man buries his head. No, buries his hand in the food dish, but will not even bring it to his mouth again. Now that's lazy. That's real lazy. I ain't say it is in the book. I mean, the food right there. You don't even bring it to your mouth again. Strike a scoffer for refusing to learn, and the naive may be warned to become prudent. Reprimand one who has understanding and a teachable spirit, and he will gain knowledge and insight. He who assaults his father chases away his mother, is a son who brings shame and disgrace. Y'all see that? My teens, you see that? First commandment God gave was honor your mother and father. Guess what you get for that? He said your days will be long and things will be well with you. Anybody know what well means? You'll have a good life. Whole life. Long life. And let the days really satisfy you and show you salvation. Just by honoring your mother and your father. I don't care what you think about them. I don't care what you think they didn't do, didn't do right. Well, guess what? You're going to get your chance, and we're going to see how well you do. 
Nobody's perfect. Nobody. Mothers, fathers, nobody's perfect. And neither are you, my child. <laughs> okay, that's for that, that's it. Go to Okay, I think my sons have enough. We're going to talk about now the characteristics of a godly father. Amen? Amen. We're going to spell out the word father, F. It's the first letter in father. F is for faithful, fearless, and financier. Faithful. Dad needs, dads need to exemplify a good life. Turn to 2 Corinthians 3, 2 and 3. You there say amen. amen. It says, you are a letter of recommendation written in our hearts, recognized and read by everyone. You show that you are a letter from Christ, delivered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of the human heart. When we, how we live, our children see us. They're watching us. You're like a letter from God. So you have to be careful how you behave in front of your children. We need to make sure we're not behaving like children in front of our children. Amen? Amen. We have to watch when we're angry. Uh, we have to have self-control. Lying, demeaning one another in front of children. That's the worst thing you can do. Mother or father, demean one another in front of the child. You're teaching a child how to teach. You're teaching a child how to treat a woman. And woman, you're teaching a child how to treat a man. And they watch your behavior. And demeaning one another. And saying bad things about it, one another. And a lot of women are good at, for this. They mad at the, at the guy or husband or spouse or whatever. We use the kid. It's the worst thing you could do. Especially if a girl, if one of them, uh, the children is a girl. It takes away her self-esteem, her confidence. She thinks that's where a man should talk to her. And we wonder why we got women stay with controlling men, or men that are not worthy of them. They learn bullying, all these types of things. You know the woman's a weak vessel, so now you just going to continue to tower over her, yell, scream, provoke. You, you're teaching them at that time. We always say, do what I tell you to do. Children are going to do what they see you do. Children are some total of their environment. We're also um, going to go to the next letter. The next letter is financier. Provide for your family. 1 Timothy 5 and 8. 1 Timothy 5 and 8. This is a godly father. First Timothy 5 and 8 says, Amplify says, if you there, say amen. amen. If anyone fails to provide for his own son, especially for those of his own family, he's denied the faith by disregarding its precepts and is worse than an unbeliever who fulfills his obligation in these who fulfills his obligation in these matters. So it's very, very, very serious with God. We need to take care of our own, amen? amen. Those are little mini-me's. They're just like you. They're the cutest little things, and they're worth every dime. And you know what? Uh, being a financier means just not bringing food or, or providing a place to stay. A father addresses all things that go on with the family. Across the board, he's there. He's engaged. Not, oh, I work. I'm done. I'm going to come home, lay down, watch TV. <laughs> and ask everybody to bring me things. <laughs> or hop on the video games. Amen. Amen. Amen.
A financier, a lot of times, you know, I know things happen in life. You lose your jobs. I come from a strong man. I have a strong husband. I don't believe a man should ever be without a job. Amen. I know things happen. Oh, I know. Been there. But you should go work wherever you have to work. That's right. Remember that loyalty I was talking about? I don't have a job. I can't find nothing in my field. At that point, you don't have a field. Amen. No, I'm serious. Anywhere you can get work, you get it. Because guess what? The bills don't stop. If we would just be proactive in that manner, you save a lot of problems in the family. The problem is I've been looking, but some people been looking for their field for two years. What if something don't come up in your field? What, what's supposed to happen? It's only for a season. I'm about to say you had to stay there at Walmart all your days. Or, or, and, and there's some good jobs even there. Well, I don't know why we frown upon legitimate money. That's awesome. When you do right with your money, God go prosper. You don't care where you are. Some of you make a lot of money still to get a bag with a hole in it. That's what the Bible says. It's like putting a bag with a hole in it when you don't honor the Father. It's only for a season. Amen? Being a father who provides covers more than rent food. We talked about that. It's addressing other things across the board. And that's communication. You got to be able to communicate. What's going on with someone? It, I mean, you live in a house, a lot of these house, homes you live in, and nobody even talks to the children unless they want to get them something. But they say, how was your day? Or oh, unless they got in trouble at school. Then we do a whole bunch of talking. Whole bunch of talking then and threatening. And a lot of times the kids will get in trouble at school because it does get them some attention. It gets them to, you talking to them. I know it's busy in this world. I get it. Make time for your family. Family is all you got. Amen. Something happened to you right now. Who you think will be there? Amen. Your buddies you play soccer with every day? Amen. Ones you play basketball with on Saturday? Amen. Who going to be there? Amen. Your children, your family. Amen. So guys, my young ones, my friends, your friend won't be there. Amen. He come see you one or two times. That's it. Family is one going to be there, man. It's so worth it. And we seem to think opposite today. No, they are worth it. You're worth it. The, fam the whole family is worth it, amen? amen? The next one's fearless. We should be fearless. Now, I know everybody has fear. This is for my fathers to be. Usually, I think they have more of the fears than everybody that's already a father. We are accustomed, and we kind of know how it all works. But once in a time when you're a father to be, you can worry about pregnancy, the birth of the child, will the child be healthy, you know, things like this. We have, they have those type of fear, fears. Will I be a good dad? Don't worry about that. You have what it takes to be a good guess, dad, especially if you're a Christian. The Holy Spirit is leading on inside, living on the inside of you. He will guide you as long as you stay connected. He will guide you. I know. We always say there's no manual. We can't add water and stir and we got a perfect child. But you need to be there. Amen? I know it's not a predictable outcome, but you'll be there. You'll be fine. You'll get used to it. The truth is, you have already have most of the skills to be a great father. And I told you, the Holy Ghost will be there to help you. Fear number four, money. Will the baby put me in the poorhouse? Now, how a baby going to put you in the poorhouse? Baby ain't gonna put you in no poor house. Actually, you get a tax benefit when you have a child. <laughs> you do. Hallelujah. <laughs> you get a tax benefit when you have a child. And we have to watch fear. Fear does not come from God. Who it come from? Yeah. Satan. If everybody a father, you surely can be a father. You can do all things, amen. Yeah. <laughs> you got mom and dad's working today. It ain't like it was back in the day when the father was dependent on for everything. My, miss, my, my pastor Nick, I ain't worked much. I mean, dependent on for everything. Today we live in a different society. Both are working. It'll be fine. And if you want to be that person, still make the adjustments. So you don't stress the father out. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, Fear number five, will it change who I am and keep me from the things I love and what I want to do in my life? 
Will my life be over? <laughs> no, you're still living. I think we're all still breathing in here, right? <laughs> a kid is a big commitment, but it still can be adventurous, spontaneous. Life. You get to do it with the kids. I'll tell you, it's nothing more for men. A lot of men are missing out. Children are so much fun. Yes. I had so much fun with my children. Well, I was a child at the time when I had them. I was 19. But anyway, I had a lot of fun, clean fun with my children. And it, it made a bun. I love the commercial where the guy, he got the, he's dancing with the little girl. And he's spinning around. He's doing the ballet, too. I just love that commercial. It's something she'll never forget. You ain't got to put the tutu on. But you can do a few twirls. Get into her world. Let them know that they're important. And not just when we need to discipline. Amen? Amen. <laughs> well, I have to give up all my hobbies and things we enjoy. Give up on my dreams. Or at least put them on hold. Like I was saying, each child will enhance your life. It's nothing like a child. I think that's some of the problem today. Some of us don't have children, and it's made us real selfish. And we really don't get to experience real true love. Let me tell you, a baby love you no matter what. That baby ain't worried about how much you make, Daddy. He ain't worried about it. He don't even know. But when you come through that door, Daddy! They only do that for the Daddy. They don't do that for the Mama. <laughs> I'm serious. Daddy! Like, what is up with this? I was up with you last night. <laughs> Daddy's girls and mama's boys. And it's so really important to be there for the girl and the boy. But the girl, you don't realize how you mess up the psyche when you're not there. You got somebody who want to admire you, and you're looking for a woman to admire you. You know a kid will admire you come hell or high water. I thought some kids' parents... I thought it was like poor parenting. I mean, you say something about them, and they would tell you off. I'm just like, whoa. They weren't even there for you much. But they will fight for those parents. Guys, there's somebody waiting on you, waiting for you to show up, admire you, and always be in your corner. Amen? Amen. Amen. And you got pastors that'll help you be fathers and mothers. You'll be fine. Second one, A, and father. You're to be the author, the one that originates or creates. You're supposed to be the author, uh, authoritative one, and you're supposed to be available. Author, one who originates. The father should be the first one to model and set the vision for the family. Who are we? Are we gangsters or mobsters? Are we Christians? Are we drug dealers? Who are we? Do we make children and don't take care of them? Or we, we take care of our kids? Who are we? You're setting that stage. Amen? Amen? You're setting that stage. Authoritative. You give instruction or discipline. A lot of times we lay back, we let the woman do it. You make me the heavy. I'm always the one that's disciplined. A father should give instruction and discipline. And let me tell you, it's, it's different. When a father speaks, they listen. And women, I know, don't ever, ever talk about, I don't, you're married, baby's dead, I don't know what it, whatever, never talk about him. You have your problems with them, they're not doing the child support, whatever, it don't hurt, it doesn't help your child to bad mouth them. Because guess what? One day, you may need them. When they don't listen to you no more, because you be, yeah, 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 and they just, yeah, okay, okay. You may need the help. But if you've talked about dad, how bad he is, he a no good this and a no good that, he don't do this, no. they're not going to listen to that. They have no room to listen, to listen to him. They won't. And for guys, you want to have that voice? You got to be available. You got to show up. Not pick, I'm going to pick you up and you don't. Not make a promise and you don't do it. You show up, I don't know what the situation may be between you and her, but you can make provision to be there and give 
and, and, and spend time with that child. That is, that is what you're supposed to do. When a child is ignored, do you know the child feel? Something is wrong with me. That's what they feel. Something is wrong with me. When your mother and your father ignore you. Um, so it's very important that we have an order. Even if things didn't work out the father, don't do that to the child. T, tailor. To make or adapt to suit a special need or purpose, tailor, to make or adapt to suit a special need or purpose. Special need or purpose arises, fathers go get extra work. They're going to get extra work. They set the target, the market to shoot at, the goal for the family. What's our goal? They set the goal. They teach. They're teachers. And I tell you, that's done mostly by our behavior and getting, in, and getting involved. A boy imitates his father. A girl chooses a guy like her father. We're a T. You're to be tenacious, persistent in maintaining and adhering to something valued or habitual or strong. Tenacious, that means persistent. Persistent in maintaining or adhering to something valued or, uh, or habitual or strong. Come in the church. Come in the church. Persistent. Persistent. You're giving God value in that child's eyes when you bring your children to church. Consistent. Not CME people, Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. Consistent. That's how you get value. Your children get value about God. Not, you know, it take them everywhere else and then it's time to do something at church and you're null and void. Or you, 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 you're late, you have come. You're, you're showing how special God is to you. And that's how they're going to take him. Praying together. That's something you could do. That's habitual, shows value, right? Um, my dad, I, right now to this day, I call my family together at Christmas to all pray before we touch anything. We every year, as a child growing up, we all had to get around the bed, all nine of us. In his bedroom, we all kneeled and we prayed. You couldn't touch a thing until we prayed and gave thanks for everything he brought us that Christmas. And it lives in me today. Giving God value. I love it. I see Kai and Jay Wednesdays sending out them cones with his little baby son. Man, the value he's going to have on God is going to be great. Because he come up and say, I say it right here, right? We can't wait till we get it. What are we going to church? Church! Man, I don't want to hear that preacher. You don't be saying nothing. You're making me go to sleep. It starts here. Then you ain't got to drag them when they're 13. They know this is what we do. So we got to make persistent, habitual, value things. A job. Maintaining a job. Let them see you maintaining a job. Huge. Value, right? Number four, H, honest. No matter what, you should always be honest. Free from fraud or deception. Work a legitimate job. They're watching you. They're watching you with dishonest on that phone. You slept in, and then you get on the phone and lie to the boss. I had an emergency. I wanted to take my wife to the emergency room. Your wife's standing right there. <laughs> my car broke down. Car right out there in the drive. They are watching you. And they give a lie. But when you still telling them lies, so I'm going to beat you. And they've been watching you do it all your days. <laughs> honest. Even if, it, even if you're wrong, even if you think it's going to cost you. Be honest. You are, you decide how you create honesty. Pick up kids. Honorable. That's the other one for H. Being honorable. Your nay, let your nay be nay. And your yay be yay. When you say no, it's no. When you say yes, you're going to do it. Always do it. I know things come up. 
It should always be coming up. Promise the kid something to do it. Guess what? You're teaching him to be a man of his word and her a man of her word. That's integrity. Some people tell you they're going to go shopping, they're going to go here. Oh, I, I can't go today. And some people I don't even make plans with. It, it's just ridiculous trying to even make an outing with some of our families. It's ridiculous. Change midstream. Wait, I thought we was meeting over there. Oh, uh, no, no, we're going to meet an hour later. What? No integrity. Come late. <laughs> I was so proud of my family. We went on the train. We all met up together. We managed to all get on the train on time. Hallelujah. <laughs> Nobody tried to tell Nikki boy hates that. He's like, man, my sister. <laughs> Nikki, you don't have children, baby. <laughs> But still, your yay should be your name. Plan, prepare. You can get anywhere where you need to be on time. Amen? Amen. Um, where else was I here? <sighs> Honorable. That's where I was. Okay? Humble. It's the other one. Be humble. Patient. Self-control. And kind. Not always trying to... Mm, when men beat their chest and do what I tell you to do, that's an insecure man. That's an insecure man. You, when you're properly taking care of your family, you don't have to do all that. Amen? Amen. Hunger and strongly mo motivated by amb ambition. That's the other H. Hungry and strongly motivated as by ambition. Should be a go-getter. Go get her. Creative. Go get her. Creative. Get a lawnmower. Go cut some yards. A lot of times, I don't have a job. Me and Pastor Nick can call you 100 jobs in 10 minutes. He is creative. Amen. Always been. When you, we didn't have a Christmas tree. And I'm just bugging him about the Christmas tree and Christmas. I said, babe, I gotta get, we got to get a Christmas tree for these girls. We don't get a, I was like, we have no money. I watched him take his program. He used to sell these programs for car maintenance. And he went and bartered for a Christmas tree. Man, I'm going to give you all this mechanical work. I'm going to give me that tree right over there. And I tell you, at that moment, I was like, you get my baby. He got my children a Christmas tree with no money. <laughs> Always, never worried about him. I didn't. I really did. Uh, you're going to find it somewhere. Yeah. And for your children to see, I mean, it's just like, mm. yeah. amen. Yeah. I'll never forget that. But you have to be creative or go get her. Like I said, get a lawnmower, a truck or something. Go cut. Yeah, you'll be surprised how much money you can make if you really want to make some. Amen. Yeah. Number, 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 the, no, I'm sorry. Letter E, effective encourager. Means to fill with courage or strength, a purpose, the rate in the raising of one's confidence. Effective communicator. Encourager. Effective encourager. Are we an effective encourager? Do we really encourage our children? Or are we sometimes our fears stop us from encouraging our children? Can't have fear. You encourage a child, you gotta prepare the child to win. A lot of times it's done, go, yeah, go. We don't make sure they got what they need. We don't make, they need to be in training. If you can't pay for that, go out there and train with them yourself. Amen. Throw the ball like this. Scoop it up like this. Training, amen? We have to prepare them to win. They have to be prepared. Then they go out there with confidence that I can do this. And then you stand there and you root them on. Amen? Effective encourager. That's being effective. Now, oh, son, you could do it. Go ahead. And you don't you know, show up. You ain't help them with it or anything. Uh, R, letter R, responsible, respectful, reasonable example. I used the prodigal son for this one. Turn to Luke 15, 11, and 32. Okay, don't turn there. You can just write it down. The prodigal son. Okay, the prodigal son, he, I won't read, I'll just summarize it. The prodigal son, everybody knows the story, I guess. 
I don't know, but I'm going to tell it. Anyway, the prodigal son, he leaves home. He's a Jew boy. His father, he comes to his father and he asks for his inheritance, which I thought was really, really disrespectful. I mean, how are you going to ask your father for your inheritance and they're not dead yet? I don't think I could have been passed the test like the prodigal son. I said, boy, if you don't get your look, you scoundrel. I ain't even dead yet. Give me my inheritance. Now you don't even get an inheritance. Probably been me. But anyway, hallelujah. I'm learning over the years. <laughs> so he gives him a third. Back in the day in the Jewish culture, the oldest always got a double portion. The younger one always got a single portion. So he gives him his third. So he go off, he gets his inheritance. Has really hurt his father, I'm sure. No parent wants a kid to ask for the inheritance and they still living. Okay, teens, people. So he goes and he spends all his money on riotous living. Prostitutes, dancing, partying, having a good time. Well, guess what? He runs out of money. He spends it all on his riotous living. And now family comes into the land. So now he's like, okay, what am I going to do? I've hurt my father. And he left home and went to a pagan country. He wanted to go to a pagan country because where he lived, there was all Jews, and everybody could kind of censor his, his living, and they were living around him and kind of, kind of censor him. So he went to a pagan land. He actually went to a, 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 a country of exile. And he went to the pagan country. So now he's in this pagan country. He has nothing, and there's a famine in the land. So now he's got to go and ask the pagan people for a job. That's his first humiliation. Second he got to go, they give him a job, they give him a job feeding their pigs. That's his second humiliation. His third one, he wants to eat what the pigs are eating. And he's like, my God, what's happened? So now he comes to himself. My father has hired servants at home. Eat better than this and have much bread to spare. And I'm standing here in this hog pen. Want to eat on that corn that hogs eat on. He knew it was satisfied. So he decided, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go home. I'm going to tell my father. Let me read it to you. I love it. He said, I'm going to go home and tell, father, say, tell, him, tell my father, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you. Verse 18. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Verse 19, treat me as one of your hired servants. Well, his father see him coming from a fall. He sees his son. He runs to his son. He grabs his son. He hugs his son. He kisses his son. And he starts these two lines. Father, he starts to repent. Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Before we can get to number three, the father starts telling, come. Come, bring the fattest cow. Bring the longest, best, finest robe. Bring me the biggest ring. Put on my son. My son was dead, and now he's alive. And he's astonished. Because he's thinking, man, he's going to be mad. Man, he's going to rub it in my face. Isn't that what some of us do as parents? Didn't I tell you? I told you. Yeah, you done messed up your inheritance now. Can't help you. But most of the time, we're still mad. But this is God kind of love. This is the kind of love that God has for us when we miss it. You missed it, it's okay. Go home. Repent. You can, anything can be restored with the Father. Any relationship, any father, son, daughter relationship can be restored. <laughs> Hallelujah. But it astonished him. Before he can get the third one out, he, he called for a celebration. Then the other brother said, but dad, you never did that for me. You never threw a part for me. You never gave me a big ring. He said, son, don't you know all I have is yours? But that's the God kind of love. What is this, what is this parable teaches us? First of all, we should never misuse our freedom. God said, who the Son set free is free indeed. 
We should misuse our freedom for sin. If you've been on leaving God, things will go badly for us. We will be humiliated in an uncaring world. The further we get from the Father's love and care, the worse off we will be. And our best course is to return to God and his forgiveness. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Oh, yeah. Stand to your feet. I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, right now, Father, for this day. I thank you for every father in this house, Lord. Father, I just thank you, Father, right now, Father, that they, they know how unique they are, Father. You made them to be the head and not to tell, Father, rule and reign, Father, of our families, Lord. Oh, Father, we just thank you, Father, for them right now, Father. I thank you, Father, the day that they have a desire to be more of a godly father like you, Lord. Oh, Father, I just thank you, Father, this this morning, Father, that they're at peace, Father, and they're ready to go out, Father, and become better fathers, Lord. We just thank you, Father, for it right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.